So this video is part three in our four part series on Carnu maps. In this video, we look at how to simplify three input Carnu maps. So this video is going to cover simplifying three input Boolean expressions using Carnu maps, as well as some other advanced techniques. So it's going to assume you've already watched and are familiar with both of the first videos in this little four part series. So as we know, Carnu maps are a method of simplifying Boolean expressions. A three input Carnu map can be used to illustrate an expression with three variables. The expression we want to simplify is going to be not C and B, or A and B, or C. As we have three variables, we have to put two across one axis. In this case, we've decided to put A and B across the top and C down the side, but we could have gone with any configuration we like. First, we fill in both of the possible states for the variable C. So C can either be zero or one. With two variables across the top of our map, we have four possible headings, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And you may be tempted to write them in this order. It would make sense as we're counting up in binary from 0 to 3. However, the order of the binary numbers in the headings matters. We cannot simply count up in binary. As we move from one position to the next, we can only change a single digit at a time. In this example, as we move from column heading two to three, we have a situation where both digits have changed at the same time. The first is a zero and it's changed to a one, and the second is a one and it's changed to a zero, and this is not allowed. We can only change one digit at a time, so we've fixed the issue now. Only one digit is changing as we move from heading to heading. As long as you follow this rule, you will always have a valid Carnu map. Now here we're using a sequence of binary numbers known as gray codes. They won't appear in the exam, but if you want to know more, we're gonna mention them at the end of this video. Now our Carnu map is ready, we will place the first part of the expression into it. Remember, we separate the expression using OR symbols. So we're starting with not C and B. There are two cells in our map where C is zero and B is one, so we put one in both of those cells. The expression we're looking at only contains the variables B and C, so we can ignore A at this stage. We move on to the next part of our expression, A and B. To put A and B in the map, we find all the cells where A is one and B is one. There are two locations where this is the case, and we put one in these cells. We now move on to the final part of the expression, in this case, C. We put C in the map. We find all the cells where C is one, and there are four cells where this is the case. Remember, the only variable we're concerned with at the moment is C, so we can ignore A and B. Now that we've placed all parts of the expression into the map, we can simplify it by drawing boxes around the ones. Now, there are rules you need to follow when drawing these boxes. Let's have a look at them now. So first of all, boxes must be rectangles or squares. We're not allowed any diagonal boxes in our maps. Boxes can only contain ones. They can't contain the blank cells or zeros if you put them in. Boxes must be as large as possible. Now, boxes must be 2n ones. So in other words, you can have a box of 1 1, 2 ones, 4 ones, 8 ones, or 16 ones. But we couldn't have a box of, say, 7. It's 2 to the n. Boxes are allowed to overlap. This becomes very important, and you'll see that later. And we should try to aim for the smallest possible number of overall boxes to maximize the simplification of our finished expression. So considering all these rules, the best outcome is to draw two overlapping boxes each around a group of four ones as shown here. 
These two boxes will now allow us to simplify our Boolean expression. So how do we determine the simplified expression from these boxes? Now, this is the point where a lot of videos just end. They go, you've drawn the boxes and there's your expression. They don't actually tell you how to interpret those boxes, which can be a skill in itself, especially when you're first learning these. So take each box in any order you like, and then for that box, take each variable in any order you like. If the digit for the variable in the heading stays the same, keep the variable. If the digit for the variable in the heading changes, discard the variable. OK, let's work through this little algorithm to with an example so you fully understand what we're talking about here. So we're going to start by taking each box in any order. So we're going to take the square box of four ones. Take each variable in any order. So we've decided to start with A. Now, if the digit for the variable in the heading stays the same, keep the variable. If the digit for the variable in the heading changes, discard the variable. We're looking here at the zeros and ones written in the heading line, not in the main body of the Carnu map. You can see here, we've circled them in red, the digit for A is changing. It's a zero in the left column and it's a one in the right column. Because it's changing, we discard A. So I've written that down, variable A, discard. OK, I'm still in the first box, but now I move on to B. Now this time, the digit in the heading stays the same. There are two columns in this Carnu map where we're considering this first box. And in both of those columns, the heading for B is a one. So B stayed the same, so we keep B. We move on to the final variable for this current box, which is C. And of course, we can see here the digit for C in the heading is changing. It's a zero and it's also a one. So we discard C. OK, we've considered all the variables A, B and C for the first box. And the only variable we're keeping, according to our rules, is B. So you now know for sure that this entire box can be simplified down to B. OK, so we move on to the other box because there were two boxes here. And we take each variable in any order. So again, we're going to start with A. Well, it's easy to see here that A is changing. The heading appears in all four parts of this large rectangular horizontal box. And the A goes from 0 to 0 to 1 to 1. It's changing. So we discard A. We move on to B. Exactly the same thing is true for B. It's changing from zeros to ones. So we discard B. And finally, we consider variable C. And there is only one heading to consider here. It's a one. And obviously, because there's only one heading, it can't change. So we keep C. We've considered all the variables for this box. And the only one we're keeping is C. So the first box represents B. The second box represents C. And different parts of the original expression, the different boxes, are separated by ORs. So using our Carnu map, we've simplified the original expression, not C and B or A and B or C, down to B or C. You could also write this as C or B. The order of the expressions either side of an OR doesn't matter. And this is known as the law of commutation, which we look at in a later video. OK, let's work through another example then, just to make sure you've got this in your head. So we're looking at not B or A and B and C. We'll start by drawing up a blank Carnu map. And as always, we've placed the variables A and B across the top, C down the side, and we've added binary number headings representing the different states of the variables. Remember, when writing out the headings, we're not counting up in binary. We have to make sure only one digit changes at a time. Now our Carnu map is ready, we will place the first part of the expression into it. Remember, we separate the different parts of the expression with OR symbols. 
So we're starting with not B. There are four cells, cells where B is zero, and we put ones in those cells. We now move on to the next part of our expression. In this case, A and B and C. To put A and B and C in the map, we need to find all the cells where A, B and C are all one. There's only one cell where this is the case, so we pop a one there. Now we've placed all the parts of the expression into the map, we can simplify it by drawing boxes around the ones, making sure to remember the rules for doing so that we covered earlier. At this point, you may be tempted to draw two boxes shown here. However, there's one additional rule we have opted not to let you know about yet. And that was on purpose. Boxes can wrap around a Kearney map. Now let's take a quick pause and look at the implications of this extra rule. The most complex Kearney map you will see has four variables and we'll look at that in the next video. The wrapping rule means boxes can wrap around the left, right, top and bottom edges of a map. In this example, that means this is actually a single box that wraps around all four corners. So although we represent a Carnu map as a 2D flat grid, it's actually more accurate to think of it as a torus, a 3D donut shaped object. So looking at the Carnu map in this way, you can see how the four corners are in reality all next to each other and form a single square. To put it another way, we can move off any edge of a Carnu map and it continues on the opposite edge. So back to our example, now we've covered wrapping, we can now see that one of our boxes will look like this. It's a box of four, a square. Now knowing this new rule, you might be tempted to draw your second box as shown here. However, we can't do that as one of the rules states, we need boxes that contain two N ones. And this box gives us a group of three ones. We need two or four. Given all these rules, the most optimal outcome is shown here. These two boxes will now allow us to simplify the original expression. So we're going to follow the same algorithm as before. We can choose either box to start with. We've chosen the wraparound square. And we're going to start by taking variable A. We can see the heading for variable A changes from a 0 to a 1. So we discard variable A. We move on to variable B. We can see the heading for variable B stays the same. It's zero in both cases, so we can keep not B. Now pay attention there, we're keeping not B. Yeah, we're not keeping B because it's a zero in both headings. That's the term we're keeping. And the zero means false, so we're keeping not B. We move on to the final variable C. And we can see the binary digit in the heading for variable C changes from a naught to a one. So we discard C. Okay, we've considered all the variables for the first box and the only variable we're keeping is not B. We now know this entire box could be simplified down to just not B. Okay, move on to the other box. And let's consider A first. A is staying the same. There's a one in both the headings there. So we're gonna keep variable A. Okay, let's now consider B. The digit in the heading changes from one to zero. So we're gonna get rid and discard B. And we move on to the final variable for our current box, which is C. And there's only one heading to consider in this case. Uh, so it can't change. So we get to keep variable C. We've considered all the variables for the second box. 
So we're keeping A and C. This box is A and C. So the first box represents not B, the second box represents A and C, and the different parts of the expression, the different boxes, are separated with OR symbols. We've simplified the original expression, not B, or A and B and C, to not B, or A and C. To recap, when we consider variables within the same box, if the heading stays the same, we join the variables together with AND. When we're considering different boxes, we join the expressions together with OR. Finally note that the simplified expression could also be written in a number of other ways as shown here. Any of these expressions would be considered correct in the exam. The different answers come from the order in which you look at the boxes and the variables within them. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. How can Carnot maps be used to simplify Boolean expressions? OK, you can pop your pen down at that point because we're done with what's in the exam. But we did mention earlier something called grey codes. And if you wish to know a little bit more about what they actually are and why they're important, we're going to cover that now. So we mentioned earlier that the headings in Carnot maps must use grey code sequences and not traditional binary sequences. That means we can only change one bit as we go from one binary number heading to the next. But why? By using grey codes, we ensure that adjacent cells will only ever vary by one bit or Boolean variable. Grey codes are required to organise the outputs of a logic function so that we can spot commonality. Without them, when we place ones into the map, cells sharing common Boolean variables would no longer be adjacent and we would not show any visual patterns or commonality. A Carnot map is simply a representation of all the possible states of a truth table for a specified number of variables. Four variables in a truth table produces 16 possible outputs. All 16 states are represented on this four input Carnot map. Using grey codes, we can transition through the map any way we like and only see a single digit changes at a time. Remember, we can also move off any edge of the map and re-enter at the opposite edge. If we overlay the grey codes onto our 2D map and our torus, we can see it still works. The four corners of a Carnot map are next to each other, and as you move from cell to cell, only a single digit changes. So just before we end this video, we want to make you aware of our freely available Boolean Algebra Cheat Sheet. This is a double-sided cheat sheet that comes in A4 or A3 version, which can be used as posters and it covers all the information on Boolean algebra, the various logic gates, truth tables, definitions, and a lot more material will be going over in future videos, all in one handy double-sided sheet. You can find this over at student.craigandave.org. Just scroll down to where it says A-level revision. If you select that, you will see OCR A-level revision, including a whole bunch of free resources, including these cheat sheets. You can click download, no subscription or logins required, and you'll get access to this cheat sheet.